crew there, we said hi and keep, have a good one, keep on keeping on and, and uh, looking forward to seeing you. All right, yeah, same here. Tell you, 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 you and your project. Yeah. Tell everyone I said hi and stay warm. Oh, yeah, you do the same. All right. Yeah. We'll talk to you okay. later, Grandpa. Okay, bye now. Bye. Great two-hour conversation with my Grandpa. I'll try to post some of that video. He's He's got some stories, and he was telling me all about some soaring competition back in the 70s that he did really well in and uh, he's building a as I'll try to post the, the video clip he's talking about it he designed a um, I don't know what scale it would be maybe fifth scale um, 100, 120 some inch wingspan um, Ford tri-motor he has a fascination of Ford tri-motors he designed one back 30 years ago, and he's just now finishing it, and uh, he's going to donate it to a, a local museum. So, really cool stuff. Uh, very talented builder, has, you know, a lifetime of experience, you know, and then handed that down to my dad, and now I'm doing it. Um, so, really cool stuff. I know you have a lot of soaring experience. <laughs> I sat here, uh, oh, where I got, oh, I got up on top of the computer center near, the, near that fork you got me. Yeah. Uh, I got a, oh no, it's right, that's on the other, on my uh, other storage unit here, right above my head. It's uh, from my, back in 1976, I think it is, at Harris Hill. I took a second place there over a hundred or so contestants. On uh, one given day, they had two separate days. I think I uh, got it on a Saturday. And, uh, yeah, it was on a Saturday. And it was a real blustery, cold, uh, the wind coming out of the west. And uh, the, one, the guy that really won the contest wasn't me. I just have to have the, uh, I didn't even need the balance because I had, uh, I had to, it was my first sailplane I ever built. It was a nine footer called a Gulf Coast or some guy down Texas Gulf Coast designed it. Okay. And it was a long, long, long moment arm. It had long fuselage, just a box fuselage, a real simple fuselage, and a old wing cord was probably 10 inches maybe, and a nine foot span, and a standard tail group. And, uh, Matter of fact, I experienced flutter a couple times with it. I, I think I had a covering for a hinge and uh, whatever. Anyhow, uh, that, that given day, uh, it ended up the guy that, uh, that was my timer uh, was, uh, he was a full size, uh, he was a doctor out of Syracuse or somewhere that, that uh, was down there a lot of Harris Hill, and I think he even went down state somewhere too in Pennsylvania or whatever. At any rate, why he, he's the one that was, uh, and he, he was uh, giving me some tips, you know, while he was timing me. And uh, you had to go way out, you had to go out about a half a mile after you went up on the electric winch, got up about 300 feet. You had to, you had to poke the thing out there to the west. You had to get out there about a half a mile before he, before he hit the lift, and uh, and then and then you all of a sudden you see the thing go up, you know. Yeah. And so so you just uh, go back and forth out there until you say time to head around, you know. And uh, matter matter of fact, one time. Uh, were they uh, were they ten that, minute were they ten minute flights? Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, then you got. Uh, I think a hundred points for landing in the circle. Right. Well, if you got, if you got, I don't remember if you got had to hit dead center or how that was. So I think the current rules, anyway, you get um, your full score if you're within one meter of the of the circle. Okay, it was probably about the same then. Yeah, if you got 
dead center, you got more. You got the 100 points, I think. And if you got in the, we're in the circle, you got 50 or whatever. And uh, and I, I I was out there and uh, I I didn't I was just having fun. I I was dressed for the weather and everything, so it didn't bother me. And other guys were standing around shivering, you know. It was a na nasty, cold, windy, and uh, so. Uh, I'd been out there, uh, well, backing up for a minute on the plane. I had uh, been practicing a week or two before that up at the high school Votech uh, parking lot up here on the hill. Yeah. And uh, up below the high school. And Elmer and I were practicing up there. And I got a, uh, a down curl or something there and uh, hit, hit a, a, a light pole and broke the fuselage. So I did my my type engineering is is, is uh, kind of crude. Uh, I go I go heavyweight, so I took instead of the balsa wood, I took uh, I took some uh, scrap paneling, that like like eight inch thick uh, Luan or whatever they call it, paneling, you know, uh -huh. for the fuselage. Well, that 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 about doubled the weight of the plane, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> but it was. Up there at Harris Hill, uh, so I didn't have to put any ballast in or anything. See, yeah. it was just perfect for that given day. And uh, when I was coming in uh, for my final, if I would have taken my time and went on by and turned and come back into the wind, I, I would have got I would have got first place probably if I would have went over. Well, even yeah, because I would have got enough points for the landing that uh, the few, few few seconds extra would have taken to you know to do the what I just said. Why uh, instead I landed tailwind, and as all I had was spoilers. That was back before they had these sharp tooth skids on the bottom and stuff like that, you know. Yeah. And, and of course, uh, and if you flipped your flipped your plane and. Uh, why uh, you, you didn't get a score, you know, for the landing. Oh, is so, that right? Uh, so I just uh, kept kept it, uh, had the spoilers on and kept it, uh, and it slid out the other side of the circle, so I didn't get my landing points. Oh. Or else I would have got first place. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, uh, well, anyhow, this this doctor, and then that night they had a banquet or something, and uh, they wanted me to get up and and uh, give a little spiel about uh, what, what the situation. And I, I didn't know what to say. And uh, what I should have done was uh, give, give the credit, all the credit uh, really went to the uh, the guy that was coaching me, you know. Sure. He was a full, full size, a full scale sailplane guy. And uh, he, he's the one that really won the contest for me. He told me exactly what to do, you know. <laughs> Uh, but he, he didn't, uh, I guess he didn't tell me to go, uh, go downwind and come into the land in a circle, you know, it was, but I, I had, it was an afterthought I had. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I didn't, I didn't even know until, uh, I didn't even know I was in the running until, until, until after, afterwards. Yeah. My, my buddy Elmer, he never told me. He knew. He figured I'd probably get nervous, nervous or something, you know, if I, yeah. if I found out that I was uh, in the in the competition, because I'd never I'd never placed in a contest before, neither one of us. Funny thing, the odd thing is, though, I can't even remember building this big Ford trimotor back uh, twenty some years ago, and uh, I, I, I can vaguely remember drawing up the plans because I was off work for four, four months with a leg injury from cutting firewood. That's when I drew or doubled up the size of the plans. I had gotten a set of scale, well, two sets of uh, small scale plans for the Ford Tri-Motor. And that's when I made, uh, I actually did the fuselage according to the sport scale, which I found out is uh, several things are off a of scale on that. No, no real biggie, but uh, for precision scale, it would have been, you know, it would have, it would have been uh, taking a lot of points away. But, uh, but seeing what I'm uh, using it for, why uh, is not, not to worry, you know. So I, uh, uh, but I made the, uh, we're on the uh, sport scale flying model, which never did fly either. Uh, uh, that, that was just, uh, the tail group was just uh, flat, uh, had uh, 
work and then you laid up uh, as a matter of fact your center section was uh it was uh, styrofoam uh -huh. and uh it was thinner than your your framework so your your cardboard your, that, that particular one was called an e-food it was about 16th corrugations on the cardboard that set down in so the top was flush with the uh, framework it was uh, inset, you know. So, uh, yeah, so that was, but on this, uh, on the bigger one here, I went to the scale to the uh, airfoiled elevator. And a rudder, rudder, I think, is just flat. It's flat side, that's, I don't think that's, uh, that's not airfoiled. Uh, I can't remember on the real one it was or not. Right. Probably, probably was. Uh, but, uh, so, uh, that was different on that, so I had to use, uh, it was too big to, well, I could, I could have cut the uh, uh, foam cores for the elevator, but I didn't. I used uh, ribs. Well, I can't remember which way. Uh, I know on the link it was, it was too long for my uh, hot wire bow on the outer. I could have done the center section, but, uh, but I had to do a lot of construction in that. I, I built up, built up two box bars in there for to, for uh, plywood spars to slide into the uh, box bars, you know, for the, from the outer wing panel into the center section. Uh -huh. All that's all that kind of stuff. So uh, that that was all. I had like three quarter inch or inch whatever they were, mostly styrofoam whips in the in the in the wing in the wings. Had had a few. Uh, of course, the root, root, root rib where, where the, uh, all the hardware went down to the engine to sell the landing gear was a uh, half inch plywood. So, uh, but so then I had a few, few ribs for, uh, out of a uh, eighth inch or, or whatever it was, uh, uh, scrap uh, paneling, you know. Uh -huh. That's something else. I'm anxious yeah. to. It'll be a, a work of a work of art when you're done with it. I'm sure. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm gonna contact the newspaper see if they want to do a story on it. And uh, when I if I live long enough to get it done here, I, my my goal now is by by spring, by I'd say by April, uh, should be no no problem. Every everything. You know, if everything goes according to oil or however they say, uh, should be no problem getting it done by uh, by April, and then so I can tell uh, haul it up to uh, the museum. Be be better weather, you know. I'm glad I glad I don't have it done to take up this time of the year, you know. So uh, that's about a three-hour trip up there. Yeah. Know? All that stuff. So. Uh, yeah, that wouldn't be a. A fun time right now. Yeah, I, uh, I'll, t I'll tell them if they want to do a, a little story on it. I'll tell them, but uh, it's a. Uh, uh, I had, I had a, had a <laughs> in my head, but I can't remember exactly how I was going to say it. Something about uh, uh, the, the project of a lifetime. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this, this is the biggest boondoggle I've ever gotten into. I'll tell you. I, I While we're talking, triplane fuselage is all done and uh, ready to move on to, uh, I think I'm going to do the tail and then we'll start on the wings next. So I'll give a quick, a quick overview and we'll catch you next time.